Do you know the difference between the pigments LAM and LAMP Black? Let's time travel back to London during the 17th century to find out the important difference between them. The dialist, John Smith, wrote an influential book on what he called vulgar painting. By vulgar painting, he meant painting and decorating. However, as fine painters used some of the same materials, and often bought these from the same colour merchants or druggists, the book can still be used by modern painters today to understand something of the materials and preparations in late 17th century England. At the time, pigments were very limited to a few organic and inorganic substances. Most were unstable or fugitive. Smith tells us about four black pigments in his book, ivory black, willow charcoal, lamb black and lamp black. All were available at the colour shops in lump form or ready prepared in ox or sheep bladders. Ivory black was made from the raspings of combs. Combs were often made from ivory at the time. These ivory raspings were then burnt or charred in order to make the black colour. Ivory is still an excellent colour for modern painters today, though it is slow drying and the oil film is soft and brittle. Occasionally, 17th century painters added verdigris, a hydrated copper acetate of a light bluish green colour. It was a poor pigment, but excellent as a dryer. In pigment form, ivory black is hazardous, so as then, care should be taken when grinding. Willow charcoal was made from charred twigs. Smith tells us that this colour was seldom used as it was difficult to obtain. A modern equivalent is something like vine black. Smith makes a distinction between what he calls lamb black and lamp black. This is a little unusual and it doesn't appear to have been picked up by some modern scholars in the field. In fact, the pigment that Smith refers to as lamb black would later, in the early 18th century, be called lamp black. But when Smith referred to lamp black, he meant a different black pigment. Smith tells us that the lamp black is the soot of a lamp or candle, and it was sometimes actually called candle black. He tells us that artists commended it, and that it was a finer and brighter colour than lamp black. Other writers of the period also refer to lamp black made from the soot of lamps or candles. For example, John Stalker and George Parker in their treatise called A Treatise on Japanning and Varnishing and William Salmon in his Polygraphies describe the same manufacture of lamp black from the soot of a link or torch or lamp gathered together. Smith's description of the manufacture of lamp black is different. This, he tells us, was the soot made from rosiny and fat parts of fir trees and came from Sweden or Norway. By rosiny, he means rosin, a solid form of organic resin obtained from trees. Basically, this is burnt and the soot collected. It is pure carbon, but very slow drying. The film is brittle and soft in oil. The same description of its production can be found in later writers, but the term has changed. Instead of lamb black, as used by Smith, it is now called lamp black. Ephraim Chambers, in his Cyclopedia, refers to a black made from the soot of rosin as either lamb black or lamp black. It appears that between 1670 and 1720, lamb black and lamp black had become synonymous for the same kind of black made from the soot of rosin. For Smith, then, at least in the 1670s and 1680s, lamp black was the soot made from a candle or lamp. Lamb black, on the other hand, was a black made from the soot collected from burning rosin. The meaning of lamb may have been slang with a sense of to beat or thrash, possibly referring to the method of obtaining rosin or the soot during manufacture. For example, this meaning can be found in John Wilkins' 
an essay towards a real character and a philosophical language, published in 1668, and John Kersey's A New English Dictionary, published in 1702. The word lamb, with the sense of to beat, can also be found in Samuel Johnson's A Dictionary of the English Language, published in 1755. However, lamb black as a colour was not used by William Salmon or John Stalker and George Parker in their treatises, and it is possible that it was unfamiliar as a term to them. So, you now know the difference between lamb black and lamp black, and how these terms evolved and merged for the same kind of black pigment between 1670 and the first few decades of the 18th century. Hi, I'm Micheline Heine from Parallax Art Fair TV. Thank you for watching. Remember to subscribe and tick the like button if you enjoyed the video. Leave us a comment. And for more information about Parallax Art Fair, look at the description box below. Until next time, thank you for watching.